Hey there, and welcome back. In this video, we'll introduce you to aggregate queries, a powerful way to compile information from multiple objects and gain insights from your data. Aggregate queries allow you to combine information from several objects into a single one, providing you with an overview of the group. This is especially useful when you want to extract insights that describe the result set as a whole, such as how the search results might differ from the rest of the data set. The syntax for aggregate queries is similar to get queries, but there are some key differences. Let's take a look at the basic syntax for an aggregate query. With aggregate queries, you can retrieve what we call meta properties, such as the count, as well as aggregations of each properties. Now, as you might imagine, different operations are available to you depending on the data type of the property. While we could aggregate numbers to obtain the mean, maximum, or the minimum, we couldn't do that for texts. And similarly, operations like getting counts of tokens would only be available for texts. In other words, the available aggregations depend on the data type of the property being queried. You can also use vector search parameters like near text in an aggregate query. But because vector search finds objects by degrees of similarity, it doesn't exclude any objects. So when performing aggregations with a vector search, it is crucial that you do what's called limiting the search space by setting an explicit limit or threshold with the limit or distance argument, for example. To further refine your aggregate queries, you can use the group by argument. This allows you to compile information from multiple subsets of results based on specified properties. The aggregate function is a powerful tool that helps you to compile information from multiple objects. You can use it to gain an overview of the search results or even subsets of results, whether by themselves or in comparison to the rest of the data set. You can use them with vector search parameters as well as filters, which you'll learn about in the next section. And remember that with aggregate queries, it is very important to limit search space with some sort of a threshold. That's it for this video on aggregate queries and Weaviate. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you soon.